This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, it is late on a Tuesday, and that means we got a big old board game haul. I am hopped up on triple chocolate brownies to get enough energy to make it through the night. And uh, thank you for everybody that has already subscribed. If you want to be one of the cool kids, you can hit the subscribe, share, like, all that kind of stuff yourself, and uh, be part of the community, comment on stuff that you enjoy. Maybe I'll remember something else you might like, because we are at... Uh, 62, 6,223 reviews as of the 41 that'll be on this episode. So let's get to it. There's plenty. First up, we are busy defending America. This is a hypothetical, which means that it is a false version of the past. Solitaire game, which means you get to play it all by your lonesome if you need to. And you're going to be intercepting bombers that are trying to make it to the mainland United States. Let's take a quick look. Compass Games gives us lots of different war games, all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, it's been a couple of weeks since they've had something out, but they usually have something every week or so. So, uh, yeah, they maybe they're slowing down in order to produce the many board games and war games that they've come out with already. This one looks very much like what we see from them. You have the uh, square pieces as you can see that you come with most of these war type games. This one is two to four hours, 14 plus. You can see they're uh, coming from across the Atlantic and trying to make their way into the Western Hemisphere. And they're gonna do it by these planes. So it's pretty cool the way it's all laid out. You have different systems, controls, you have to worry about fuel, all kinds of things. So if you are an aspiring pilot and you're not playing Microsoft Flight Simulator all day and night, then maybe you'd want to pick up one of these. You've got runways, you've got different types of planes, prop planes, jets, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, multiplayer um, can be possible. It says that if you're going to play cooperatively, then you can do two or more people, uh, but it's not meant to necessarily be played with multiple games or anything like that, but you can work more people in, so that is neat. And uh, there will even be... Uh, da -da 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 some uh, extra content if you pick up the Paper Wars. Uh, I guess that's a magazine, probably some other type of zine, but you can get an expansion module to go along with it. So there will be some future support. Something nice to think about when you're defending America. One of the games that I like to play as far as video games, and there are not many, is the Assassin's Creed franchise, and I am not the only one. Apparently, almost 4,000 of you have already jumped on to this dice game based on Valhalla. This is the only... Assassin's Creed game I have yet to play because I play them when they get cheap. If they're going to get cheap on Steam, I'm not going to spend a bunch of money just to be first in line. So that's how I see the world. It's about $36 coming out of Canada. Uh, is this Flyos? No, this is Pure Arts. These folks, I don't think they're the ones that did the other Assassin's Creed game. Let's see. What have they created? Master Nine Eyes. So they are not part of the other Assassin's Creed game, which I have backed. I just happened to forget who did it. Um, but you can pick up all these different types of counters and stone dice things and some bowls. And, you know, you can use them for just about anything that you want to play. I don't think you have to necessarily use them just for this Orlog game. But that part is up to you. Uh, if you can remember what the runes mean, then you can remember what the numbers say. And then take your chances. Rolling them bones. $199 to get all the cool stuff. Um, that part's up to you. This little horn thing as a first player token would be pretty neat. So just, you know, throwing that out there. I believe as a tribute to the Oompa Loompa, we have Chimpalimpa. This is some type of cute fantasy football troop. As you can see, uh, some of them have pugil sticks. Sometimes you can get free things. Uh, you would have to be pretty early on a Tuesday morning to get it free during the first 24 hours because I don't know when it exactly launched. And I'm doing this at night, so sorry. They should set those to 48 or 72 to get more people in if they want it to make any sense. But that's just how it goes. Maybe you can tell them here on their Discord server. There you got your monkeys. There's a banana. Uh, they're hard to see because that's just how it works. When I tried to expand things last week, it didn't really show in the OBS window. So uh, we just have to kind of deal with it. There are resins and there are metal uh, different models that you can pick up. Here we go, some painted versions of tree monsters. And uh, then you can see the various... 
components that they have provided. A little turnaround, so you got a little monkey in the tree in the background with a banana creature. I like the bananas for teeth. That's a cool little thing that they got going on. Lemurians, um, I don't know what these guys are, if they are supposed to be... Oh, I guess they're lemurs and not the Lemuria that was supposed to be one of those fallen uh, continents. So that part is pretty neat. Um, they got the big old eyes. And the primate structure. Then we got the big boys. We got the big old monkeys. So uh, apes, really. The gorilla types. You can have your own grod. You can have your own lemurs. You can have it all. So they're not going to be cheap because that's just how it works. But they are going to be cool looking if you need these kind of guys. 210 euros on the MSRP if you were to pick these up from their store after the Kickstarter. 120 now. Um... Yeah, it uh, for the whole set, 225 euros. So what's that, like 350 bucks? It's, uh, it's pretty expensive, but they're really neat. And if you were going to create a super cute little monkey chibi uh, kind of world, um, some type of Humblewood jungle maybe if you're into RPGs, then these guys from Grievo Games look really neat to be able to do that with. Then we got one of the big boys. This is Privateer Press. They make a bunch of paints that I own. And I've yet to play any of their games, but uh, I know a lot of people are really into them. And from what I can tell from the paint, what I can tell from the designs of their models and things, they are a great company. This is a skirmish game as far as I can tell with 35 millimeter scale. So you can take these guys if you wanted to and use them for whatever purposes you have. If you want to play them in Warcaster, if you want to play them in a different game, I don't think anyone will stop you. They all look pretty darn awesome. And uh, the, this uh, game has been around for quite a while. The company has been around for quite a while. So there's a lot of support out there. And there's a lot of people, I'm sure, that will be around to play with you, depending on whatever area you're from. Um, lots of neat Protoss-looking baddies. Um, whatever your sci-fi fix needs to be they have something for you lots of cool art lots of cool different uh, characters and whatnot you can check out the rest of the site as you can see i've only been about halfway through it starting with a 50 dollars book if that's what you need and then for 150 dollars, you can start getting the uh, starter sets which means if you want it all four you're going to be shelling out the whole wallet but that's just how the games go sometimes and if you need something to show off all those neat little figures you've picked up wherever you picked them up from, then maybe the Adapt Tabletop LED Edition will help you out. So this is a modular table. It has lights that run around it. It is not cheap. It runs about $54 for the LEDs alone. And um, for $88, you can get a little more. I will tell you something really neat, though. Um, this is battery-powered. But so are the ones you can get on Amazon for $15. Seems to be about the same type of system. You can get those with a remote control. You can get those with uh, mood lighting, just like this one. It seems to be the same type of strip. It's just organized better with the stands and everything to hold it off of the, the uh, countertop with the regular table. I think you could DIY it for pretty cheap. But if you're not handy, if you have no skills whatsoever with any type of tooling... Then maybe you can go ahead and pick this one up. Um, but yeah, it. I know the price of lumber and everything is uh, falling in price. It's still expensive, but it's falling in price. For 36 to 48 inch panels, I still don't think it would run you as high as 200 bucks to get all the equipment to put everything together. So that part's on you. If you want to order this from Italy, you can. But I really think closer to local, you'd be able to just take some staples and... Uh, run an LED strip around a, a piece of board and uh, be able to get the same effect with a couple of dowels stuffed underneath it. You can make something really cool and sized, you know, just to your table. But it is a great idea, and if you want to support them, you should. I'm just saying, you know, shipping's expensive, so sometimes it's good to save a couple bucks with some elbow grease. Then this campaign is called Flicking Finches, and they put a picture of a kid and uh, for whatever reason, they used to tell people, oh, if you put pictures or put your kids in your videos, then you get better hits and you get more views. And um, then they realize that it's just a bunch of pervs. So I try everything I can to not put any pictures of people that are not adults 
in the videos because I just don't feel like those kids had the opportunity to say whether or not they wanted to be in whatever their parents plan was and I uh, I just don't agree with it so um, you can't see the top it is called flicking finches and if you want to support it you can because it's still a game you're gonna pick it up it's based on Darwin it's based on his time in the Galapagos where he picked up different finches you have all these different unique uh, tokens you can pick up and it'll have a little bit of a dexterity game to go along with it you're going to be flicking the little finch tokens around the board trying to land them as best you can in uh, then uh, in your, your area so that's it and uh, that's why I don't put kids in any of the stuff I do everything I can to avoid it I would hope that other creators follow suit and I know nothing about golf but I watch a lot of murder stuff so this might still be fun this is Methodology, which is an Agatha Christie book, um, Murder on the Links. So you can have all these different characters. I'm not sure if this is a Poirot novel or not. I wouldn't be surprised if it is, uh, but I'm all for being able to examine evidence and do other cool things. They got a bunch of characters and cards and objects, basically what you'd expect from any clue type game. I don't think you actually have to solve it by looking at the clues yourself and solving them that way. So you use the mechanics of the game to do it. I'm more for the games where you have to kind of use more of your your own intuition rather than the, the card values um, and rolling dice and that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of set for this type of game because I have Brook City. Um, but you may need something like this to uh, play along with Agatha Christie. And why not? The lady uh, was very prolific. She made a lot of really cool stories. Why not uh, support her even uh, all the way posthumously when it becomes a game and uh, all that kind of stuff. Can't wait for Death on the Nile to come out with another cool movie uh, that I get to watch. So, yeah, until then, you get some games like this one. Then one of my favorite songs by The Clash, Train in Vain. It's a secret track. I think it's uh, on London Calling. They made a great song, and they didn't have time to get it on the artwork on the, the back side of the, the album, so they just left it off of the artwork and put it on there as a secret track for everybody. And uh, if you haven't heard Train in Vain, I think it's amazing. This is a game, roll and write, play with trains for three bucks. <laughs> Almost as amazing. Um, not a lot of information here. You just have to like click on the, here's the rules, you can watch it, so type of thing. Derek Dooley has come out with a few different games, a couple of them, I think, even in the last year. Uh, if we did take a quick look at the rules, it is a, yeah. So it is a Benny Sperling game for one plus players, and you get a little extra information. So not a lot to go on as far as enticing somebody into playing the game, but... You know, indie developers, you got to do what you got to do. If you like trains, if you played through this before, uh, I don't know why it says 1 to 100 players, but maybe that's just the design. You all play next to each other. <laughs> why would you stop it at 100? Uh, for 3 bucks, though, if you're into trains and indie stuff, then maybe you would be available to give this a shot and uh, go from there. Don't, don't know what type of cards or anything we will utilize. I think this is a print-and-play. Yeah, this is print-and-play exclusive. Then we get one of those games that is made of wood and uh, is a very specialized board. Penny Hockey from Utah. And um, you're going to be flicking pennies at each other, trying to bounce it in. <laughs> so uh, if you don't have big old mitts like me, then maybe this will make more sense for you. That uh, it'll fit on the board easier. So it's like air hockey. Um, it says it comes with 10 pennies. Maybe for Canadians they need the pennies because they don't have pennies anymore. But uh, otherwise, I think you probably have a bunch just sitting in your couch. You might not need the extra, but that part's up to you. So, uh, yeah, just flick them on in. Try to defend as best you can. And uh, try not to get to a fight. Then we are on to Winged, Vid Winged Victory. Nike is the goddess of Winged Victory. This one is among the clouds above, though. So it will be about dogfighting. In World War I, I believe, because of the biplanes. 
So uh, some folks have said that they like it. That part's nice. As you can see, it is pretty much like the rest of the uh, um, war games. You get some play mats, encounters, the square types, and a bunch of different tokens. Uh, sometimes you see these with uh, little standoffs made out of plastic. That doesn't seem to be the case here, but if you already have those, then uh, maybe you can make it more 3D for you. And uh, yeah, you get a little grid, you set yourself up, you fly around and blow each other up. So uh, basically, uh, you know, you fly. Uh, if you want to check out more of how combat works and all the little uh, graphics and things in motion, then uh, you can check out the page for yourself. That's why they're easy to click. And otherwise, we're going to move on. But uh, you can download the rules also if you need to. I was just scrolling down to check and see. There is a deluxe version, but uh, if there was any like tabletop uh, simulator or anything, there does not seem to be just yet. If you need a World War I aerial uh, combat game, then uh, maybe this will be the fun one for you. I don't think we've seen that many from World War I, but we've seen plenty from World War II. And like I said, those ones from World War II might have the standoffs that you can use or 3D print them. Uh, and uh, make it more like a dogfight. Now it's time we start getting into the fantasy stuff. This is Guardians of Fire. This is supposed to be two to five players, but based on mythical Persia. Uh, you may not have spent too much time. Uh, his name, uh, I'm thinking of like Rashtad or something, Ramstad. Um, the word Paladin, Paladin, comes from uh, the same uh, type of... Uh, Oh man, Rastam? Rastam? Something like that. I Wikipedia'd it not too long ago because uh, the Suicide Squad was fighting one of them in uh, an old comic book I was reading. But uh, the word Paladin is actually uh, from his adventures. So you could definitely take these guys, angels, demons, etc., two to five players, and fight them against each other. So you've got uh, the big bads uh, with their wings of, of skeletons and bats, and then you got the 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 other non-bads with the uh, their own types of wings and things coming at you, uh, like a phoenix. You get all kinds of uh, things that you might not know were based on Persian mythology and maybe some Zoroastrianism to throw in there as well. So, um, yeah, none of these guys are the name I'm thinking of. He's probably, like, the most famous Persian uh, mythology thing, and everybody's probably yelling into the computer right now trying to tell me what it is but my my brownie is not giving my brain the uh the things it needs so uh maybe you'll just have to go from there there is some cool art there are definitely cool minis you see it all going on here and uh, if you want to spend your money on it you definitely can 129 dollars for uh the early box and if you want to get more cool stuff it goes up to about 200 to uh 250 dollars that's about standard for these types of mini games there is not a lot of minis but there is a lot of uh, other components and things to go along with it and a lot of money spent on artwork i like this one the best this is the diva of drought apush but uh, he'd make a great balrog he's got that like crown of uh, skulls and things in the background even if you didn't like the game you will love the minis and you'll find all kinds of cool ways and things to use them for uh, this guy, the ghouls of Persia, would work great in something like Resident Evil. Um, I mean, they're just amazing, amazing pieces. So uh, check them out. They would work pretty well as different demons in Japanese games as well. Hellhounds, all that kind of business. So, you know, if you like cool things, then that's about the cost you'd normally pay for these types of models. And uh, to be able to paint them up and use them. Or uh, just tell someone like Thrill Studio that buys up these type of games that you'd be interested in the models. And uh, maybe they'll uh, piecemeal them out for you in the future. Oh man, I'm right, you're wrong. How often do we see this and not think very well of it? <laughs> the idea that you're going to be arguing with people and always trying to get the last word. Don't you hate those people? You just want to do anything but talk to them. You just want to escape any conversation you're in with them. Well, how about you play a game with them? I mean, come on. So, I don't know if this is going to do great. I think the artwork is pretty cool looking. It's very stylized, and at least you can pretty easily tell the pieces apart. It's not great for people with color blindness, but, you know, they've got other ways of telling you. They have the little um, uh, cheese and uh, uh, thumbs up and dynamite or whatever it is to show what the different things are. You can... Uh, 
do what you can. See these little monkey men and different cool things about your poor choices. Uh, artwork wise, I think is neat. Otherwise, it's basically going to be um, around that same niche as uh, exploding kittens to play with folks. But um, if you're going to be playing with people that always have to get the last word, I just don't think you're going to have much fun. So try to f play with other people that don't like those types of people and you'll have a blast. And then I'm not really sure how to describe this one, Rat Queens to the Slaughter. Uh, I, I, it's like a feminist, uh, <laughs> I don't know, um, tower defense maybe? So you have all these different uh, Rat Queens. Um, I think that they should have done a better job just showing off the models because the, see the way the light is set up where it is underneath them, but there's not a lot of like forward lighting to uh, show off the details. Everything just kind of like sinks into the background. So that part kind of sucks. Uh, having a co-op adventure doesn't though. That part is neat. Um, you can uh, fight monsters. Oh, see, you can see the, the, the better artwork, uh, in the, the cards and things. It has a, Art Nouveau style, something that you would have found, um, I don't know, necessarily from a Muchas, uh, more of a Clint, I guess, uh, type of style, thrown in with a little anime. There was an Art Nouveau style in the early 1900s where it is evocative, where you see like these um, surrounding, um, I don't know, halos, what you'd call them, but uh, that kind of thing comes from that 1900s from uh, Clint. Uh, I have some of the artwork sitting on my shelf. You got the troll girlfriend. Um, these look like fatties from uh, Zombicide. And I don't know what the duck is, <laughs> but it's a goose dragon. You never want to get in, involved with geese. They will mess you up. So uh, there's some neat things kind of going on. Um, you're going to have these uh, rat queens attacking each other in some type of a weird uh, fantasy mixed with the modern era kind of world. And uh, go from there. So... 80 bucks, so it's a little bit less money because it's got a little bit less pr plastic than uh, other games that we've seen, especially the last game, or All In Ultimate for 140. I don't know, it could be fun. Oh, why would you back? All right, so, oh, how to play. There's a little bit better look, but still see. See how the shadow is on the top here, and then the weird lighting here and then everything else is in shadow kind of makes me nuts they should have shown off uh the sculpts a little better uh like these ones are shown off a little bit because you got more light on the top parts it makes it easy for your eyes to see i don't know um you know i don't know sometimes i focus on things that maybe it's not the <laughs> the greatest thing to focus on it just happened to be the, the way that they were showing off the models i just think that uh, the models end up selling a lot of the product and they could have shown it off better. I want everything to be better, but they're doing okay with $100,000 already in the bank. Um, I think it's a neat enough idea to get started. Uh, there is definitely some comedy and things going on in there, and uh, who doesn't need someone to save them from uh, whatever terrible ogre with uh, curlers in their hair might be attacking your town. So maybe give it a shot, see what you think, and uh, let me know how it goes. And we have Top Pop, the bottled cap stacking game. So just like in Fallout, you're going to be doing stuff with bottle caps. Um, the stacking part, these are going to be plastic bottle caps. So it's not going to be the metal ones. You're not going to be running around trying to pop open Coca-Colas in order to get more. That's not really the case. But as you move through and you do different things in the various cities with different uh, types of production and through the scenarios, you're going to be doing everything you can to stack these guys as high as you can. Uh, 25 bucks, so it's not that expensive. Uh, it sets you up with the game, whatever type of soda you drink, and uh, different cities to be able to light up. So that part's pretty cool. Nice feel. It feels like that soda pop era of the 50s. Um, you have real cities and other neat things to go along with it. And... You know, nice little filler type game. Just don't lose the pieces. But then again, if you did lose the pieces, maybe you do just throw on regular soda pop, uh, pop tops. 
Then we have Naked Court, the card game. I was all for this game until I saw it was family friendly. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, I'm less interested. Because Naked Court sounded like the type of thing my grandfather would have to go to after he got caught peeing on the side of the road. So <laughs> it's like, I thought that would be funny. It's got a, a very um, European uh, political cartoon look to it, as you can see. Um, especially from what you'd see in the 1800s. If you want to see a remarkable uh, set of documentaries, look up Rude Britannia, and you'll see what I'm talking about with uh, this type of art style. It's fantastic. You're going to put uh, whatever clothes you want on these naked people and try not to look bad. And uh, you get various points for whatever it is that you find. Uh, the toilet paper roll, uh, corn cob corset, or a you know brilliantly armored chest plate. And you got all the different royals to stick them on. And that looks like it would be quite fun if you laughed at the book, The Emperor Has New Clothes. Then I think you're old enough to play this. Everybody knows it's funny. Uh, and you can even go not safe for work if you don't have to deal with children. Um, and it might be even funnier. But that part is up to you. Then we got a game that's already made. This is under occupation. It just needs to get manufactured. So you might as well take the uh, print and play version and make one yourself. This is by John H. Cohn. 51 other Kickstarters already under his belt for smaller games. Uh, so, you know, if you're into these things, he's got a, a really good system uh, set out. He's going to make just enough money to get the games made and, uh, you know, make it easy for everybody. That is a good way to go. There's even dice. And for some reason, you can't go on Amazon for a couple of bucks and get them yourself. $2 to play this game. And you just print it off. Have a blast. And there you go. Solo card game. And so if you want to share it with your friends, then you can play through it. And for $2, pass it around. Then we have one of those games that I think is just going to start a fight. But maybe that's the intention. These are boxing sticks. And let's look at this just being completely honest these are wooden sticks with little boxing gloves on the ends of them and you are supposed to hit them around and smack them at each other and um, if you did give these to a couple of rambunctious uh, young individuals how quickly do you think they're going to end up smacking each other with them or poking each other's eyes out I would say pretty fast uh, the idea of just flicking these things to try to win, that's neat and all. You could do the same thing with chopsticks. Uh, it's not going to have all the boxing gloves. Um, you're not going to be able to catch it and do all the other uh, power moves and stuff and card stuff if you just did it with chopsticks. But uh, I don't think game is inherently bad. I think that the idea of the little sticks and stuff is kind of neat. I'm just saying that you're introducing um, you're introducing violence into a uh, game world you got to be careful with the level of maturity of the people you hand this to then we break ourselves back into fantasy and this time with the card game it's a two to eight player game called rider and um you're just uh trying to give some type of tribute to i think it's a goddess omentra so i'm not sure if there's some significance in australia for that name but there might be four 25 Australian dollars, 19 US dollars. You can get the game. If you were a retailer, then you can get it for 10 times that. But you get 10 times as many. Um, you get legendary cards, someone named Ryder, and I think those are the classes that you play. Then there are also some champions and other types to go along with it. Uh, I don't think this is a collectible card game. I think this is just an, uh, an all-in-one card game. So... Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, you can check it out yourself. Um, yeah, I don't know what these long winded things are. I think these are stories that are written for each of the characters. So if you wanted to go on the Kickstarter page and then, and read big long stories that go along with it, then, uh, that'll give you a start. I think it'd be better told in flavor text, but Hey, what do I know? Then if you want to play by post, and by play by post, I mean give these people money and wait 12 weeks to get a box at your door. Then uh, Train of Terror might be the solo horror game for you. Um, it's supposed to start right away and then be delivered through Halloween. So you'd be getting it pretty quickly. 
Uh, they have a few different other ones. You can check out the free teaser also to go along with it. Uh, I've gotten the, uh, what you call it, the Hunt a Killer box for a year. So for this one, uh, at least you can get the pen and paper or print and play version for 12 bucks. Uh, for 26, you get postcards and 66, you get some artwork to go along with it. So it is much less expensive. I think it was like 250 bucks or something to finally make it all the way through the first story from Hunt the Killer. So this is much less like that. It's a little bit more like an RPG because you can see the way that the maps and everything go along with it and that it is a little bit more like fantasy. Trains are uh, going to be a little more popular, especially because of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft and one of the domains of Dread happens to be a train that goes between the different domains. So uh, this might be on people's mind. I think you should check out... Uh, oh boy, I can't think of it. But uh, Golden Goblin Press has a very good Call of Cthulhu module about hobos and i think it's like riding the riding something called the cold train so i don't know <laughs> it has something to do with that but i really want to play through that one very lovecraftian but not like a not a standard enemy that you would normally end up with so yeah trains still a good thing to play in a game trains are called an iron horse maybe you take your horse in order to get out west this is bantam west and uh, on the thumbnail, I haven't had a chance to watch it from Quackalope. They called this game Red Dead Redemption, the board game. And I'm sure they couldn't afford that kind of title, but uh, maybe it is. Two to four players. Uh, I don't see a solo mode just yet, but uh, that would be cool. They're saying it's a quick setup. That's always nice. 15 minutes, though, I bet with a little bit of work, you can get that even further down. Uh, various action point systems. You have line of sight for your guns, quick D6 games, and modular double-sided boards, deck building and hand management, all the things that you might be able to enjoy depending on the type of stranger you want to be. For me, my weird wild west is in uh, The Few and the Cursed. That's the game I'm going to play. And also uh, the Zombicide the Wild West Zombicide. So if not for me on this game for this round, but maybe on a future round uh, when I'm done with those other ones and I got more room on the shelf. Meeples, a couple of uh, various uh, plastic pieces to go along with it. And where did it go? I was scrolling and then it disappeared. I was going to show you whatever the models were. All right, well, I guess the page doesn't want me to show you the models. Anyway, you want to check it out yourself. There are lots of uh, little pieces that you could upgrade this game with that you probably already have from previous things. You can have a great opportunity to use all your new painted Wild West meeples when you pick them up from uh, the previous campaigns, and I know a bunch of you already did. Then we're going to run to Circle of Friends. This is a three-in-one game system for one to six players. Um, yeah, if you just have a couple of people sitting around and you need a game to play, and you don't need the uh, super complicated artwork, then uh, maybe this game is for you. Uh, as you can see, there is a circle of friends, then trouble at hand, friends and foes. Uh, it looks like it uses the same types of cards, same type of art, all that kind of stuff. It's about inclusion, as you can see from all the rainbows, and uh, there's nothing bad about that. The bad parts come from these bullies, but they make sure to call them ignorant to go with the theme. So uh, if you want to have this type of, um, I don't know, <laughs> uh, if this is your worldview and your kids have this worldview and they think that this would be fun, then uh, jump on and play along with it. And maybe this will inspire them to be better people. Maybe you're not a better person, but you can be better organized. This is Cuba Majigs series two. This is for all your trading card games. Uh, it's a cube. Well, not quite a cube. It's a rectangle. You can make these rectangles into cubes. <laughs> um, but it's a bunch of uh, dice boxes from Hit Point Press that you know from many other large Kickstarters. I think they're out of Canada, but uh, you can ship in a lot of different places. You get tuck boxes. You get, uh, let's scroll down, uh, boxes for your tuck boxes that you can keep your stuff in and organized however you feel the need you can uh, even get other types of things to color coordinate 
to go along with it, store dice, all that kind of business. If uh, you're not handy enough to make stuff yourself out of cardboard then or paper or whatever, then you can get some nice pieces that have lots of colors and um, that uh, satin uh, or linen finish on the outside, whatever it's called, uh, to make them a little nicer and uh, work a little better for all the cool stuff that you want to keep in your collection. Now we have a game that is probably on the perspective of the bully. This is Hype Tag. And it is about strategies in recess. So whatever type of kid you were, trendy, sneaky, confident, and popular, uh, I don't see any nerds here. So <laughs> not what I was. Um, you can be of uh, these various characters and run around and play Tag. Uh, I worked on that movie Tag uh, at the last job with uh, John Hamm in it and a bunch of comedians and uh, it's kind of fun if you just want something that's a, a neat little movie and it was about uh, some friends well into their 30s and 40s still playing the same exact game of tag and at the end of the movie they show you the real people and the types of pranks and things they pulled on each other so that they could continue to play uh, maybe this will inspire your kids to do the same thing there's some neat art work uh, it looks like grown up Dora the Explorer I think that's the the best I can uh, I can relate to as far as how this art looks. Um, yeah, check it out if that's what you're into. Play tag if you're stuck inside. And go play regular tag if you're not stuck inside. And then we have Tailmore. So it's like Tailmore or Bigger Tail. Hmm, neat title. The Scan and Play Dungeon Crawler. All right, so you will probably need your phone or tablet. And you have QR codes. And the QR codes in the middle of a fantasy, like medieval style campaign, might throw you off a little bit. But once you get over it, it's a really handy thing to have because it allows you to interact with the game. It allows you to have uh, uh, different types of story things uh, pop in or change the maps, just like Mansions of Madness, um, other weird storytelling things can pop up and the game can be constantly updated. People can make their own missions and make it easier for you. Uh, these come with standees because it is hard to put uh, the QR codes on a 3D printable um, 3D piece, uh, but maybe you could change the party marker or something with something a little bit better. I think it's only gonna be available on Google Play in the App Store. Uh, if you had some other type of device that you wanted to use, that might not work as well. Uh, fairly cheap. Because most of the stuff is done with cards. Maybe in the future they will even have a version of this with augmented reality. Since they're already going to have the codes. They could easily switch to that. We'll see how it goes. Art looks pretty neat. Um, I mean it's not the style that you would find in the something made more for adults. Skews a little bit younger. But it still looks pretty neat. Then we have another one of those three-in-one box games. This one's about animals. It comes with Animal Alliance, Canine Capers, and Feline Felonies. So if you have a dog or a cat, or both, then maybe this will be fun for you. 40 to 60 minutes to play, one to four players. So if you need co-op and solo, then this is covered. Uh, these are obviously 3D printed pieces, but they probably will be injection molded by the time you get them. Um, some nice little pieces. Simple board, simple everything. Um, I'm going to guess Game Crafter, uh, so it doesn't necessarily need a huge order to get started, but uh, it would be kind of neat. And it will be, I'm going to guess, uh, if it's using Game Crafter or one of the other local European services, not going to have too many uh, delays. So that part's nice. So many games are about problems. This one is about solutions. Solutions the game. Co collaborative game of hope and action for the climate. That's cool. Uh, there are plenty of games that are not so hopeful about it. Different apocalypses and whatnot. Um, so you can get uh, your name for five Canadian dollars. You can get a retail copy uh, for the same. Or you can get one for yourself. Cards only version. So again, if you're going to be trying to save the planet, then you're going to start looking at solutions even from the standpoint of how the game itself is made. So for the cheapest amount possible, they're going to print you uh, this cards-only version. And then uh, you can get a full game if that's what you need. Um, and they'll even plant a tree for you. 
if you back when you see this. So that part's pretty neat to go along with it. Uh, you're looking for solutions. It looks a little bit like a really, really trimmed down version of uh, Terraforming Mars. Um, and may, who knows, maybe that could be an inspiration. But Terraforming Mars had the um, thermometer as it goes up and the oxygen and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it, and it, I guess changing the climate is the same thing as terraforming. So you get to make those changes and go along with it yourself. Um, various pieces, they look nice. You can check out the rule book and see if you really need the full game for the extra seven or eight bucks or just the cards if that's all you need to uh, by taking a look at what's on the, in the, the, the rule book there. And then we continue with these Japanese games. This time it's just this one, the Kindly World or A Kindly World card game. Uh, as with all the Japanese stuff, um, it's got its own unique art style. So unique, I have no idea how the game would play. <laughs> uh, but if you're into this type of world, um, I don't know. I was watching, we had this one movie from one of the studios. It was called Gantz. And it had Onion Boy uh, as one of the things that was being chased down by these creatures. It was, it didn't make any sense to me on any level I could figure out. But this guy here with like the whatever snorks head thing that looks like one of the onion boy from Gantz to me. Um, a lot of this is in Japanese, so it's hard to figure out, but I'm sure there's some type of story about a village. Uh, there is more English in there, but uh, it's more for the people that already know that they would be fans of this kind of thing. And I already know I'm not. Uh, weird though, if you did look at the top selling um, trade paperbacks and things from comic book shops over the latest part of this pandemic, they cannot keep anything Japanese in stock. Chainsaw Man was one of them, and there's like Attack on Titan. Apparently, the shortages have happened with uh, the being able to receive stuff from Japan uh, with the manga and the anime. And it's just more popular than ever and all going all kinds of crazy insane. More power to them. I'm just not the person to buy all that stuff. And we have worked our way back to where we normally do RPGs and 3D printable models and stuff. Which is where all the models are. Even though you might use these 28mm metal miniatures of the Scarlet Knights in a different type of game. This is going to be a very quick campaign. As you can see, you have four days from this recording, which means if you made it to the weekend, you're too late, which is great that we changed the format to being able to get these things out on Tuesday nights so that you can jump on it. Um, these little fellas are neat looking. They're knights, as you would expect. Uh, there's no zoom-ins on them. <laughs> they are not gonna come painted, um, but they're all gonna be metal. Uh, you can ask Jamie Loft, I'm sure, with the 25 campaigns they've come out with, that uh, they will be able to answer any of your questions because they've seen it all before. And it's going to be about 35 bucks for the total of 10 nights if you need them. And uh, they're all like singled out in bases. So depending on what type of... Uh, you can play war games, skirmish games, or uh, other types of fantasy stuff, then you'll be set. And last week we did something that was just called Sci-Fi Art and Maps. And this week we have Sci-Fi Art and Maps uh, from a different campaign. This one has 12 maps, 400 pieces of art, and 50 tokens that you can utilize in your uh, VTTs, virtual tabletops, what that stands for. So whatever you're going to play uh, once you get down to the bottom here. You've got some ships, you've got various uh, cities, planets, different things that you can pick up. And there's even more types of art. Uh, I wish they would have made a little bigger for you to see, but hey, that's the way it works sometimes. Um, yeah, check out all the different pieces. There are probably uh, more than a few of these uh, different tokens you could utilize to populate your game with various NPCs and maybe even pick something out. Uh, there is some art samples if you, uh, it's sitting on a OneDrive. So yeah, we'll worry about that later. You can check that out yourself. And go from there. but maybe you need a ship to go with all that stuff the Corsairs collective has 3d printable starships uh, these have a lot of flat surfaces so I would definitely suggest the resin printer to make them nice and smooth FDMs would be a little bit harder to keep everything smooth same problem here with the lighting put the light like this corner you see like this edge right here put the light right in its face not back here no one cares put the light right here <laughs> and then like right here 
that light would be right there and you could see all the detail on this thing. It's like, why do you care about the back? Guess what about the back? I don't care about it. <laughs> Put it in the front where I can see something. Ugh, these folks, man. You got to yell at them sometimes. And, uh, you know, look at all the detail that's lost. There's all these little, like, uh, greeble things that are sitting in there. All these edges that could have been picked up. You could actually see the turrets if they'd put the light over here instead of up here. It doesn't make any sense. <sighs> anyway, 6,200 of these, huh? Getting a little bit jaded. <laughs> a little bit. Tiny little bit. There's a, a lot of different uh, cool ships and things in here. But um, I just wish you guys could see it a little bit better. Uh, maybe on their next Kickstarter, this is their first. Um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe what would relax me is some mushrooms. Some unique dice, mushroom dice, pop up on this one. Uh, they are asking for $55,000. That's a high ask. They probably will not get it, but that's not to say they don't deserve it, but to say that um, they might need it because they see the intricacies of uh, this almost lace work on some of these guys. Uh, they are going to need it out of a specific type of plastic <laughs> in order to keep it so that it doesn't fall apart too easily. Um, and that's why it's going to cost a significant amount of money. These are tops more than their dice, but they do have numbers on the inside of them. So when you flip these guys over, you can see a one, three, two, four, however you want it to go. Uh, again, if the light was a little bit better, then you'd be able to see it a little easier. Um, the idea being that it's just a different shape, whatever ends up being on top, and at least these are weighted in such a way that they'll kind of like land in these grooves and you'll be able to really see what's on top. Some of these have been really round and uh, might have in-between states. These ones are a little better at having states that um, you'll be able to really tell right away. Um, they're mushrooms, man. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. The way that they're all put out, this one, Phallus and Duds Astis, you know, this is a cool looking thing, but you're going to have really, really tiny connections. Uh, so it might uh, might not have a lot of weight to them. Uh, maybe they even would benefit from being metal. And I'm not a big metal dice person because they can be really expensive. These ones are not going to be cheap at 55 British pounds. Uh, what does that come out to? That comes out to about $77 for a set. So they are going to look really cool. And if you had a fungal druid uh, or some type of swarm keeper ranger, then this would be pretty awesome. Or you're running in the underdark and you want to roll for the myconids, then these would be pretty cool. But that's a lot of money to put at it. And uh, I would say the D20, the one you're going to use the most, is the weakest structure. So that part might be hard. Um, if they came painted already then that would be something that would be way more enticing. Um, but I think it's a unique challenge, pretty neat idea. And one of the things about mushrooms is they can bioluminesce uh, in some uh, versions of them, some species of them. This would be a great opportunity for you to bring that into your paint jobs with some powders, and that would be pretty cool. So, yeah, just something to think about. But uh, not a bad idea. It's just maybe materials wise there's some better options definitely you don't want these out of resin they're they're too weak for that cyberpunk you say you like cyberpunk and you'd like some buildings well how about the vert you can get led lightable magnetizable modular stackable cyberpunk buildings so that's what we have here check it out you got a little guy he has got a gun right there pops on pops off that part's pretty cool. These are locking together, so that part's pretty neat to go along with it. Uh, and uh, big enough for most of your, your fellas to go in and out of, at least from the ones here. You can get the open lock system as part of it. You can put some magnets as another part of it. That part's all super duper cool. And uh, yeah, they are routed for lights. So if you wanted to show off there you go some led lights whatever type of creator you are it's pretty damn neat uh the way that these display as you can see they've got the the mold lines on the bottom um it's 3d printed on an fdm printer if you are upset by mold lines then maybe you'll move your way over to something on a resin um 
but they do look pretty darn cool all the way around even like the different modular scaffolds and street clutter and other cool things little greebly things that you can stick on the the walls to make each one of them more interesting i like it uh maybe maybe you can get a really small like raspberry pi um L lcd screen and pop it in some of these things and you can have like big displays for not too much money i think the last one i saw was a seven inch display for like 30 bucks with the raspberry pi to go with it so think about it you can have some cool things going on then we have creature feature quarterly um this is for osr so if you are into the old school you can get some paper minis you can put these in your virtual tabletop you can get all kinds of cool things uh this is the seventh one in They've come out before. You recognize these uh, zine covers from all the ones that have come out previously. You can get all these different kind of cool characters. I think you can use them wherever you want. They just happen to be set up uh, originally for uh, old school. But the old school is based on the first versions of the newer games, which means that it wouldn't be the end of the world for you to move these into the more... Um, modern versions of those same games so check it out if you've been uh, enjoying this series already or you want to jump into it then uh, maybe you can contact them and see about getting the older ones to go along with it too then also for the old school we have seas of sand which has a uh, crocodile tarask just sitting in there from the look of it and it is about the vast ocean of liquid sand funny thing about sand all you got to do is really blow air through it or bubble some water and it will become a uh, ocean or a fluid all on its own. You can do it with uh, gases that escape. You can do it with geysers. You can do it with lots of things. So this isn't that far off. Uh, quicksand kind of runs the same way. And people sink all the time. Um, and you can see lots of really cool science videos to go along with it. Um, yeah, sand ships, big old worm things. Uh, seven different types of sand in this one, such as silk, sugar, salt, kiln, Vulcan, bone, and the king's sand. All right, that's cool. Plants, animals, phenomena, um, merchants, and piracy, things that go along with everybody, and uh, maybe even some cactus. So that part's pretty neat also. Pick up the book, play along, get yourself uh, some sand in places that you don't enjoy. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you'll have a good time playing it. Maybe even work your way into doing uh, some of the other desert-type um, Dark Sun-style campaigns later on uh, as you move past the old school and into the new school. Then that was for an old school. This is for every school. This is the Book of Galp. This is a horror, magic, and microfiction book. You can get uh, a little bit of a story. You can get this uh, crazy artwork to go along with it. It says it's inspired by the Babadook, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, Misery in the Shining. Those are some fairly varied stories to go along with it, but if that's what he's into, great. You get 49 spells and tales to go with them, 100 terrible catastrophes, 49 bizarre things, and 29 monsters. So that's all pretty neat. There are no spell blocks. There's no um, defined pieces or anything. It just is a description of what it is so whatever you like if it's Morkborg, if it's uh dcc if it's 5e if it's pathfinder if it's anything that is based on any of those systems forged in the dark it don't matter then uh, you can pick up this book and uh, make some notes in it with a couple of post-its and i'm sure you'll be able to fix it just right for yourself or use a tool like uh, the dungeon master's vault or any of the other uh, homebrew type uh, pieces of software and uh, you can print off the pieces that you need as you've adjusted them for your system then if you don't have a gm and you just want to beat each other up then uh, dueling fops of vindemir is a fencing seduction risky behavior game and if you think about it they're all just types of conflict um, it fits a dance between your hearts, if a dance of your minds or a dance of your fists, then it's all about overcoming the enemy's defenses. So uh, 44 pages, 22,000 words. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, you can also get a few different uh, big gay nerds and uh, electric dice podcast uh, 
pieces to tell you a little bit of how to play it. Um, that's basically going to be it. Instead of having uh, the conflict or the stories spell out, sometimes it's just me versus you. Let's just jump into it. And that's what this system is for, just to figure out who is going to come out on top. Then for Morkborg, which we haven't seen too much from, this is the Kennels of Carnage. Uh, you're going to be saving some little doggos. And uh, it's a pretty small brochure size. You can get seven new creatures, three different cursed artifacts, a hound master, and ten rooms to explore with some random events and other things to go along with it in that unique Mork Borg yellow, black, white, pink uh, kind of style with the reds. Um, yeah, it is, uh, if you haven't played it yet, it is a uh, rules light system with a very dark themes. It's about the apocalypse that is currently going on, not after the apocalypse. The world is doomed and you're just following the aftermath. That is Mork Borg. Then we're on to Angels and Devils. If you didn't like, or maybe you wanted to expand from Baldur's Gate, uh, the Avernus adventure book, then maybe you need more angels and demons. So here you go. You have a whole new set of books to break you into it with uh, some neat illustrations, some nice pieces that um, explore various parts of the world. Some uh, interesting, again, with that same... Art Nouveau style um, that you would have found. I mean, you found it on like absinthe ads and uh, other neat things. If you go to Century Guild and look them up, I have bought some art prints and books. There's a book called Flowering Lines that Century Guild has put out that's really neat for that type of art style. If you're into this type of art style, um, that's what I'm referring to. Secret of Cragtop Citadel, The Devil's Bane. And Wrath of the Pit Fiend, so you have the different adventures that go along with it. Um, it seems like it would be your own smaller version of Dante's Inferno. or well, not necessarily just the Inser Inferno, but the whole Divine Comedy with all these different characters. So new types of angels, new types of demons and devils, and all that kind of fun things, including the cultists that go along with them. Boons, blessing, feats, powers, all the fun things. Maybe even after you hit level 20 when you start taken on gods then maybe this would be the time to uh to bring that in if you still like those characters and you want something that is a little bit higher stakes then we have 3d miniatures and an adventure book called the menagerie for monsters and i like this idea so it's not just uh and it's cool that they have the flying platforms that part's neat um and you can get those if you back very very quickly but you have the adventure that goes with an interesting monster. So not just the 20 new monsters, spells, and all that kind of stuff in this book. You get all of these. Like this sandworm here would be great. Or purple worm, whatever you want it to be. You paint it, whatever you want. Or print more of them if that's what you want. These are all STLs. 100 plus characters and they're STLs. You can print as many of them as you need. Um, and they look really cool. You get some uh, different desert looking terrain. So when you get down to these types of maps and you have this type of canyon set up, then you have the terrain and things to go along with it. Um, they come pre-supported. You can play, print them on. Even they have some suggested uh, pieces or uh, printers for you from any cubic. Uh, it does have the uh, the Prusa models to go along with it. Um, but the Elegoo Mars and the Photon, those are SLA. And then the MK3 and the Ender 3 Pro, I believe, are both FDMs. I would not print these on FDM because there's a lot of detail going on. Um, you would have uh, some difficulty with the extra lines and the lowest FDM typically will get would be a 0.1. There might be some reliable 0.05s that'll be a little bit better, uh, but by being able to print an entire layer at one time, you get less uh, vibration and other weird things that go along with it and you get a much better print for, I think these Elegoo Mars that they suggest here, it's like 200 bucks right now. so. You'd be able to pick these up and go along with it. Just throwing that out there. Um, these are probably going to be some big worms and whatnot, but these guys are going to be in your 28 millimeter range. But look how neat they look. You get some uh, some grungs and uh, other cool things, and uh, some projected like dragons and whatnot as stretch goals. We'll see how it all turns out. 
And then Squeaks in the Deep tabletop role-playing system we have not heard from Onyx Path. What? Yep, it's Onyx Path in a, quite a while. This is for Pugmire and Monarchies of Mao. These are their animal-based RPGs. Onyx Path are some of the people that are doing Chronicles of Darkness, which is the New World of Darkness system. And uh, they're a pretty experienced RPG company. They've come out with quite a few things from before. Uh, this just happens to be a different system from them. So that's neat. Um, yeah, if you are going to play Mouse Guard or something else that has uh, little tiny creatures in it, then uh, maybe these will help you out. They have print-on-demand discounts uh, also, and you can get uh, access to a few other things, such as the Pledge Manager. Maybe you can pick up some of their other games uh, to go along with it. Uh, drive through RPG is how they're going to be delivering all this stuff to you. Um, it's a neat idea. People like Mouse Guard. People like mice. I've painted way too many rats, so it's not for me. Uh, I get bored with things pretty fast. I actually played way too much Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale having worked on uh, some of the releases for Baldur's Gate 2, and uh, I was one of two people that had to sit there for interplay and play uh, uh, like every game that was available at this time for Windows um, what was it? Windows XP was going to release so I had to do all the compatibility testing with old games and I got super duper burnt out even on uh, RPGs and I didn't touch Dungeons and Dragons or any of that kind of stuff for decades and Warlocks hearing about them and like new stuff that was coming out got me back into RPG stuff so uh, I'm done with rats for a while because um, I had to paint so many but maybe in the future I'll pick that up again because I seem to have that happen to me uh, probably more than once in my life and then some folks have noticed from last week we are getting the Christmas stuff and this was Twas the Night Before Christmas dice so if you want d20 ornaments they look like dice you can probably roll them um, but they're going to have the little uh, hook things off on the sides, as you can see. And you want these on your tree. Um, then you can pick these up here. I don't know what they're necessarily going to be made out of. You could probably craft these yourself if you uh, get some foam core and some glitter. Uh, but if you're not that handy or you want things to be a little bit more precise, then you can pick these up. As big as uh, tabletop gaming and all this kind of stuff has been this last year, I wouldn't be surprised if there's just a ton of these polyhedral things as far as ornaments and other things in your favorite nerd store popping in within the next three months. And that's it. We did it. And this time I didn't even lose the sound. I even figured out what happened last time. Whoa. That is, uh, you know, some a little bit of improvement. Anyway, uh, 41 down, and uh, we'll see more on Friday, I'm sure. And uh, I hope you guys have a good one. Yeah, I hope you're able to get all of the campaigns when they still have the cool uh, introductory offers. And if you can like and subscribe, then more people will find out about this channel, and we'll go from there. Otherwise, hope you enjoy that. Hope you enjoy the uh, requested uh, painting stuff that I threw back up. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue to do painting videos. Um, sometimes it's neat to do something a little bit different, and that's part of the only reason why I do it that way. I am probably going to do my Tainted Grail pieces in a very similar fashion to the way I did Ether Fields, because I just like that old uh, bronze look on the board. And for some games, they just don't look right fully painted. Just like when you look at an old marble uh, statue they look better when they're just white and you can't imagine the gaudy colors that they originally had on them but they just look more epic when they're just in a plain easy uh, high contrast um, color format they, they somehow look uh, more important and uh, I feel that way about the ether fields look more dreamlike uh, when they're in that brass they feel like old toys in that uh, type of color and uh, Tainted Grail is about a forgotten world and that old toys and forgotten look I think might be uh, the best way to go there instead of trying to do everybody in 
um, current colors and maybe I'll just do some bases in different colors to be able to tell the pieces apart. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Friday, depending on how many things come through, I hopefully will have finished the daily spawns from Zombicide 2nd Edition, and I'll show off the painted pieces. If I can remember which ones I've already shown off, it's been a couple of months since we've been busy, and we'll go from there. So you got that to look forward to. You got your week all ahead of you. Hope you enjoy it. And Escape Room 2, I'm going to be watching on Friday night, so uh, things might come out uh, Saturday morning. We'll see how it goes. You guys have a good one.